Welcome everybody back in a nerd session. My name is Logan and today we'll be breaking down Caleb Williams week 12 film against the Minnesota Vikings. If you have not already, I implore you to like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future nerd sesh content. In week 12 versus the Vikings, Caleb Williams posted a stat line of 32 of 47 for 373 total yards with two touchdowns and no interceptions. I think it's by far the best game that Caleb has played this year. I think it's the best game any rookie quarterback has played this season. And Caleb Williams really controlled this game from start to finish offensively for the Bears. And I think he was the only reason the Bears had a chance to win in overtime. He was responsible for 88.6% of the Bears' total offense in Week 12. Everybody else had 45 rushes on 15 carries. Those are from players not named Caleb. I really think this was a breakout performance for Caleb Williams. He just did some truly jaw-dropping stuff in this game. So I'm really excited to get into the tape, and uh, let's do it. I'm, I'm excited. All right, the first play we're going to take a look at here is the most important play of this game. To set the table a little bit here, 21 seconds remaining in this football game. The Bears are trailing 27-24. to 24. They just recovered an onside kick. It's a very high-stakes environment, and Caleb is going to come up clutch here. It's drive 12, play number one, a first and 10. And Caleb Williams is going to find DJ Moore for 27 yards and set up the game tying field goal to force overtime so context in this is the most important play in the game and this is a great throw here from Caleb the first guy that I want you to watch on this play is Keenan Allen on the crossing route because he's going to be the one that actually opens up this play on the back end to DJ Moore he's going to take an extra defender with him number 44 he's going to drop on Keenan Allen on this crosser and it's going to open up this back window the second he drops down out of that zone for the post to DJ Moore. Caleb doesn't hesitate, throws a missile right where this defender is supposed to be, right over the outstretched arms of the two guys over the middle, right into DJ Moore's hands, and this is going to set up the game-tying field goal. Some big ball stuff right here, man. I mean, nerves of steel steps up in the pocket, and the second he sees that defender drop on Keenan, he knows that throw is going to be there, and he fires the ball. Really clutch stuff here from the rookie. All right, we're going to jump back to the drive previous here. This drive just as important. They need a touchdown to stay alive in this one. Drive number 11, play number 8, a first and goal, and Caleb Williams is going to find Keenan Allen in the back of the end zone. But this is superhuman stuff here from Caleb. So first, I want you to watch Harrison Smith here at the line of scrimmage. He is going to be blitzing off of the edge here and get completely unblocked. This is horrible pass protection here from the running back. But Caleb Williams, superhuman, man, super freak, somehow evades this pressure, just ducks him, shakes off the old veteran, and gets out of the pocket. And because he had been so dangerous, I think, as a scrambler in this game, you're going to see Caleb get out of the pocket. And both defenders that are on Keenan Allen on the drag route blitz on Caleb which leaves Keenan Allen wide open in the end zone. That's some gravity right there. I mean, I think all of them thought he was going to break and try to make a play to the pylon. Nobody takes Keenan Allen. Easy touchdown. But again, man, the fact that he's able to make this play happen is amazing. This throw is not super difficult. It's to a wide open receiver in the end zone. But the fact that he's able to escape a free rusher in Harrison Smith when his running back does not pick him up at all, have the wherewithal to get out of the pocket, take these three defenders with him and make this play it's really advanced stuff here from Caleb all right we're going to jump back to drive three for this play but it might be play of the year from a quarterback this one made my jaw drop Caleb did a ton of jaw dropping stuff in this game but uh, like I said this might be play of the year here so first guy I want you to take a look at is Andrew Van Ginkle here off the edge you just saw him shake Harrison Smith as a free rusher in the end zone and he's going to do the same thing here to Van Ginkle Van Ginkle's a really good defensive player, and this is what the Vikings do better than anybody else. They load up the line of scrimmage here, and it's a fake blitz. So this left guard is blocking nobody because they drop him into coverage, which leaves Van Ginkle free off the edge, and Caleb just explodes right around him out of his arms. And not only that, not only is he able to evade the sack, he fires a beautiful ball over 30 yards perfectly down the sideline in the bucket 
to DeAndre Swift. I mean it. I, I was waiting for Caleb to hit on plays like this on the breakdown that I did from him earlier this year. He's eventually going to start connecting on some of these passes, and this exemplifies that. Just a superhuman stuff. This is some number one overall stuff right here. Van Ginkle, free rusher, evades the pressure, can't bring him down, gets out of the pocket, pressure still bearing down on him near the sideline. Both feet off the ground, delivers a perfect jump pass over 30 yards downfield. Perfect throw. This is Caleb turning a negative play into a huge swing play, all self-created by Caleb Got to give him all the credit. All right, we're going to jump from drive number three to drive number 10. We're going to go through this one pretty quick. You see some play extension here from Caleb where he's able to get out of the pocket and scramble for 10 yards. This is drive 10, play number two, second and six. Steps up in the pocket, gets a first down. Later in this drive, drive number 10, play number four, another second and six. He's going to find Cole Komet here for 20 yards and this drive does end in points for Chicago so it's very important and what I really like about this play to commit is how Caleb manipulates these defenders with his eyes so I want you to watch Caleb and where his head is turned this entire play he is staring down Keenan Allen who looks like he's running an out route and what this does is it makes both these defenders in the middle of the field that are near commit just sink towards the sideline. They fully break that way towards Keenan Allen, which leaves a very gaping window between these three defenders to Cole Komet. This is still not an easy throw. Caleb has got to put some Tabasco sauce on this one and throw it with some heat to fit it in between all of these defenders, but he single-handedly creates this play. Both of these defenders sink towards the right side of the field because of Caleb's eyes. That opens up this play, and Caleb de delivers a missile uh, towards these defenders in between them to Cole Komet. Just picturesque stuff here from Caleb. And then later in this drive, again, they do end up with a touchdown on this drive, so all of these plays are very important. This is drive 10, still the same one, play number 8, a 4th and 4. 4th and 4. You know, you're in enemy territory, you're down big in this game, you need a touchdown on this drive. So this is the most crucial play of the game up to this point. And pressure's going to get home, and Caleb's going to find a way to scramble, even hurdles a guy, to get this first down. The only thing I would be critical of Caleb on this play is he misses Keenan Allen on this out route. He could have made this easier on himself. If he throws this little out route to Keenan Allen on this little pick play towards the sideline. But... I think he feels the pressure. He's working through his progressions. He doesn't see anybody. So the wherewithal to get out of the pocket here and still make this play is really special. Only certain quarterbacks can, can make this happen. Again, he misses Keenan, who is admittedly open on this out route, but he still makes this play happen, and they end up scoring a touchdown later on in this drive. I mean, and that's the theme of this game to me, is it was all Caleb. Caleb was the only reason the Bears were moving the ball in this game, and he was the only reason the Bears had a chance to win this game. All right, we're going to jump back to drive number two for one last play of Caleb scrambling and making something happen with his legs. That's been another big encouraging thing about Caleb as this year has progressed is he is a special scrambling prospect, and I feel like that may have gotten swept under the rug a little bit when you have an all-time scrambling prospect like Jaden Daniels, and Drake May has been so effective at using his legs. But Caleb's up there with them in terms of scrambling ability, and he does it again here in his own end zone. This is drive number two, play number three, third and eight. Things were spiraling here for the Bears. Now, the reason they're backed up is because they did fortunately force an Aaron Jones fumble inside the five. So that's why he's backed up. But the offense was sputtering at this point. They didn't do anything on the first drive. And we're struggling here. But a third and eight, and Caleb's going to scramble for nine yards in the first down here. And a couple of things. One, how he moves to evade this sack here. He's gotten so much better in his pocket presence. Dances, finds the crease. And doesn't hesitate. This is a deep route concept. So all the defenders for Minnesota are downfield. There's not any defensive backs near the sticks. There's five guys that just have no chance of making this play. So the only guy that does have a chance is the QB spy, number 43, Andrew Van Ginkle, who has been mirroring Caleb this entire time. 
And that's what's really impressive is Caleb just has to beat Van Ginkle to the sticks. And that's exactly what he does. Right to the sticks. Gets there. Caleb's legs are a real weapon. He's got supreme arm talent, but he also has supreme leg talent. And he really showcased that in this game today. All right, next play we're going to take a look at here is a big-time throw in drive number four, play number three, a third and 11. Caleb is going to find Keenan Allen for 25 yards. And what I like about this is, again, how Caleb doesn't hesitate to fire this football. It's a cover three disguise blitz here from the Minnesota Vikings. Again, it's a third and 11. They need a big gain to convert and to keep this drive alive. And this is something that Minnesota does a lot in their film is they load up the box. And they've got four defensive backs that are matching the Bears skill position guys on the outside, the tight ends and the wide receivers. And what this does is it's just going to confuse Caleb. You know, he's not going to know what areas are taken away, what guys are blitzing, who's going to drop. So if there's any underneath routes over the middle, he might have to hesitate a minute because he doesn't know what exactly guys are going to drop. The guys that drop here on this disguise blitz are Blake Cashman and Andrew Van Ginkle. Now, the problem is they are dropping as if there's going to be a route over the middle, if it's an in route or if it's a drag route by one of these guys, but there's not. Everybody's basically running a go. <laughs> it just straight up streaks. And one of those guys is Keenan Allen out of the slot. And because they're running a cover three, there's going to be a little bit of an area in between the two defenders up top. In between the middle third and the right third, there's going to be a little gap that Caleb can throw between. And he does exactly that. Caleb fires this ball right where it needs to be, right out of the outstretched arms of Cam Bynum. Bynum makes a great break on this ball, but again, he's kind of in no man's land. This is a great play call against this defensive play call. There's, it's, the route just picks right between these zones, right between Van Ginkle and Bynum. Caleb finds that little area and delivers a missile right where it needs to be to Keenan Allen for the 25-yard gain and the first down. Great play call and great execution here from Chicago. All right, next play we're going to take a look at here is drive number three, play number one, first and ten, a little bit earlier in this drive, and he's going to find Keenan Allen again for 40 yards, and this was the first play of the game that made me stand up and go, wow. These were all three plays in succession on the same drive, drive number three, that were mind-blowing, and this little play-action fake opens up all of this play, it's going to drag the linebackers just right. And what that's going to do is it's going to lose this linebacker, Gruger Hill, a little bit on Keenan Allen, where he gets turned around and a little bit disoriented because he was playing DJ Moore on the potential screen or handoff, as it does with Van Ginkle. And Caleb is, again, going to fire a rocket between Van Ginkle and Gruger Hill to Keenan Allen. I got to give credit to Van Ginkle. He plays this pretty correctly all the way, right? He's trying to balance uh, if Caleb checks this down to DJ Moore so he can make a tackle in the flat, but also so he can play this ball on Keenan Allen. And he makes a really great break on this. He's just a second late. And because of how hard Caleb throws this football, Van Ginkle can't make this play. There's a lot of quarterbacks that I'm convinced that can't make this throw, that would have thrown this a little bit too soft, where Van Ginkle can come over here and make this interception. He's really good in coverage. He's really good blitzing. He's a really good open tackler. Uh, Van Ginkle is one of those guys that I think could play outside linebacker, could play inside linebacker, could play edge. He's really, really talented. And Williams just throws this ball with so much heat that it just beats him. It's really as simple as that. Beautiful uh, ball between both of these zones. Makes the read. <laughs> Impeccable stuff. And then Allen makes the grab, gets upfield for about 20 more yards. This was the first play of the game that really made me stand up out of my seat, but it certainly wasn't the last. All right, that's going to do it for all the positive plays that I have. I mean, we really saw some jaw-dropping, superhuman stuff. Uh, some stuff that you really only see some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL today do. We are going to look at a few negative plays, and they're all basically the same thing. Just Caleb taking unnecessary sacks, and obviously the big one is here in overtime. 
And I got to give credit to Caleb again. Caleb is the only reason the Chicago Bears were in this football game. He is single-handedly the reason that they forced overtime that they are here in this situation. But he is going to have to also wear the blame for this play where he takes a 12-yard loss. I don't have to dress this one up too much. It's second and nine. And you just can't get really far behind the sticks and set yourself up for a basically impossible third and long, which is what happened. Uh, Caleb's going to take a sack here. It's going to set up a third and 21. And then they're going to get a delay a game penalty, which sets up a third and 26, which just puts them way behind the sticks, an impossible third down situation. But the biggest thing here is just the context. It's not only that he takes a sack for a big loss, but it's the fact that the Vikings are only blitzing three here and that Caleb has so much time in the pocket. There are open guys. Keenan Allen is open underneath for a positive gain. DJ Moore is open briefly for a positive gain. He's just got too much time where he doesn't throw this football. And it has less to do with the fact that he, you know, doesn't have a positive gain on this play is the fact that he holds on to this ball for, I would say, a solid eight seconds. Caleb is back here for a solid six to eight seconds. D damn near 10. And he can't throw this ball away. This is the worst case scenario to happen over time. And he's just got to throw this ball away or make a throw downfield for an incomplete. And the other play that we're going to take a look at is drive five, play number five, a second and two. And it's similar stuff. It's just a sack that I don't think Caleb can take. This one isn't as much his fault. But he's got DJ Moore open over the middle. He's got an open guy in the flat here that he could hit. He just needs to get rid of this ball. This one is less egregious than the one in overtime. But that was the only real issue that I saw on tape today from Caleb uh, was him taking unnecessary sacks, and he had a few balls that could have been intercepted in this game. But other than that, it was a damn near flawless game from Caleb Williams. So what are some big takeaways from Caleb's performance here in week 12? Well, he looked more prepared than I've ever seen him. He looked more confident. He was quick. He was decisive. And he really did a good job of getting through his progressions in this game. And I thought he only had a few negative plays on the day. Uh, obviously, the drive in overtime, he takes a crucial sack where you just can't. It puts them 16 yards you know, behind a third and long. And they end up with a third and 26 due to the sack and the delay of game. But other than a few avoidable sacks in this game and a few potential interceptions to Cam Bynum and Harrison Smith, I really thought Caleb played a damn near perfect game. He blended elite, efficient, underneath passing with incredible incredible play extension, self-creation, and playmaking in this game. And every week throughout this season that we get further and further removed from week one, I just think it reinforces that Caleb Williams is going to be a superstar and one of the best quarterbacks in football one day. I think that a top three or a top five quarterback on the planet is well within reason for a guy with Caleb's skill set. I still believe that. And I've said this in basically every video I've done of rookie quarterbacks uh, on Drake May, of Jaden Daniels. This is my second one on Caleb Williams. I think he's got a chance to be one of the best draft classes in NFL history uh, up there with 2020 with 2004 with 1983 I think when we look back on the 2024 draft class that it's going to be one of the greatest uh, at producing quarterbacks in NFL history outside of Caleb and his individual performance I want to give an immense amount of credit to the offensive line in this game this was one of the better games I've seen from the Bears offensive line and what a game to do it in right uh, against a hellacious Minnesota Vikings pass rush and I also want to give props to Thomas Brown uh, he has been calling plays the past few weeks in relief of Shane Waldron and I think he has done a much better job uh, of playing uh, of calling plays and I think it's reflected in Caleb's confidence and his preparedness in these games and I'm just I'm so excited uh, about what Caleb Williams could be in, in this league I think he's gonna be one of the best quarterbacks on the planet one day and this game gives you a glimpse into what I think Caleb Williams is gonna do on a week-to-week -week basis so let me know what you guys think. Let me know who you think is going to be the best quarterback in this uh, all-time draft class. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your time at home uh, with hopefully some family, some football, uh, friends, and some food. And uh, I will see you guys soon.